Mr. Speaker, it is a special and high honor to be in this chamber of the People's House to honor and to remember and to pay a respectful tribute to a most remarkable American, a true patriot, one of the finest Marines I've ever known, Master Gunnery Sergeant Jimmy Hargrove. He's a dear friend of mine and my family, and Jimmy uh, was enlisted. He's an enlisted Marine, and uh, this is my father, Ike. He's also an enlisted Marine. He's doing great at the age of 91. He's an Iwo Jima veteran. There's something about um, enlisted Marines. Uh, when we meet each other, uh, we often ask, are you a Paris Island Marine, as I was? And if you're a Paris Island Marine, you, you usually give the other alternative is this. You say, or are you a Hollywood Marine? That is, did you go through boot camp in San Diego? Well, that applies, that question does, to virtually all uh, uh, enlisted Marines, but uh, there are some who that question really doesn't apply to because the answer is neither Paris Island nor San Diego. But it's a different place. That went Montfort Point, North Carolina, from 1942 to 1949, 20,000 uh, young African-American men, young black men from across our country, like Jimmy, didn't go to Paris Island or San Diego. He went to Montfort Point, and that's where he endured the training that um, defines and shapes and molds young men and women now into Marines. Uh, fully segregated unit. And these Marines have gone on. Uh, to fight in our nation's battles. And Jimmy, for example, fought in Korea and then Vietnam. Some have been grievously wounded. Many gave the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. So it was fitting and proper, Mr. Speaker, when in 2012 this body and the Senate unanimously uh, passed legislation which President Obama then signed into law, which gave to all Montfort Point Marines, all surviving Montfort Point Marines, the Congressional Gold Medal. And uh, it was a privilege to be at that ceremony, and Jimmy took great pride in this, and he was there as well with his family, his wife Cheryl. There's no question, Mr. Speaker, that we're a better, stronger, and safer America because of our Montfort Point Marines, and we're a better, safer, and stronger America because of the life of Jimmy Hargrove. And uh, this picture from 2013 at the Marine Corps Ball is one of my favorite pictures. It shows the bond between two Marines, really one generation to the next. And um, I consider it an honor to, to pay tribute to him today. And yesterday, Jimmy was laid to rest in Arlington. And it's fitting that he's there in Arlington in eternal rest. And uh, what I remember about Jimmy and, and think about is it's not pictured in this here, this picture, but his smile, Jimmy's smile, he was always so optimistic. And though he knew the bitter fruit of segregation, he himself was not bitter. He was fully optimistic about our nation. And he fought for our nation even after his retirement. He engaged in shaping public policy and shaping the way our country is headed. I deeply respect him for this. He did not yield to apathy's seductive call, but he chose to continue to fight for his country. You know, we Marines uh, are a proud lot. It's uh, even embedded in our Marine Corps hymn. Last verse says, If the Army and the Navy ever look on heaven's scenes, they will find the streets are guarded by United States Marines. And so I, I really think of Jimmy as still being on duty and, uh, and in heaven as well. He's a man of deep faith. And so I would say to my friend, and respect for his life and his service to our country, I'd say, Master Guns Hargrove, mission accomplished. Job well done, Marine. Semper Fidelis, Semper Fi. May God grant eternal rest to this fine American, and may God also provide a special measure of comfort and grace to Cheryl, his wife, and their entire family. I yield back.